Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Now, as you can see, I'm out and about and that's because I'm away, but I have actually been doing some testing whilst here and that is flying the new firmware for the Avatar HD system that not only brings the new 50 megabits mode, but also addresses some of the issues that I raised over the last couple of weeks. Now, what we'll do today is just talk about my experience with this new firmware. I want to touch on a couple of things specifically. And then at the end, I just want to talk a bit about what my recommendation is on this project product right now because you're going to be hearing a lot of noise that this system's been improved it's much better and I just want to make sure everyone understands what my personal stance is on that today anyway let's get on with it and let's talk about the new firmware okay so to talk about the new firmware first of all now I'm not going to go into great depth of every change but the big important differences are they've added support for that new 50 megabits a second mode they fixed the issues with it not always connecting on channel one or reconnecting in the event of signal loss and they've improved the overall performance in 1200 milliwatt mode as well. Now, I actually had an early release of this firmware which I was testing and I've just upgraded to the public release on this firmware as well. And I've just put a few packs through that now. Talking about 50 megabits mode, first of all, I have to say, whilst it's nice to see it, right now, I'm not seeing a dramatic difference in the performance of the system, even in that mode. Even when you put it in 1080p, the image quality doesn't really jump up dramatically. Overall, the compression behavior feels very much the same. And actually, what something I will say is, I I think that the performance of this firmware compared to the beta I tested and the previous one with regards to compression is actually worse. I'm seeing a massive amount more smearing in the footage than I was seeing before. Now, it is definitely entering 50 megabits a second mode because I've checked that on my spectrum analyzer. However, what I think is they haven't been able to fully optimize the codec yet to take advantage of that improvement. In my tests, the real benefit to the 50 megabits mode is that it tends to peg itself more on 19 milliseconds latency than anything else, but it doesn't really bring any image quality improvements overall. And the behavior that we've seen is very much the same. And in fact, I'll go as far as saying, I think the compression behavior is worse in this firmware in my tests. Now, as I am traveling, I'm not able to do my usual tests. However, I was able to upgrade to this latest version, which as I've said is 23.23.4 and put a couple of packs through it first thing this morning. Now, as soon as I took off, I could instantly see things really were not good. Whilst the last firmware definitely improved how that codec performed around this heavy green grass type areas this is very much a step backwards i could see blocking i could see mushing and the codec itself just felt like it was really struggling to handle this kind of environment now with that last release whilst things went perfect they were much better than this and this again is just a very basic shakedown flight around the trees just to see how it performed and i'll be honest it looked a lot worse in the goggles than you're seeing here in the footage and so much so I actually thought something could actually be wrong. I tried in the different modes. So I tried 25 megabits. I tried 50. This is in the low latency mode at the moment, but it was exactly the same even in the standard latency as well. The codec is simply not able to handle repeating green areas just like you're seeing on the screen here. Now, I did a couple of other checks and I came back then and decided to make sure everything was working correctly because it was that bad. I just felt perhaps something is off. Perhaps I need to reflash the firmware. So I did some checks. I took it back out to another location later. But again, as soon as I took off, the same things were very much apparent. You can see here in the grasses that it just starts to block up. And in fact, when I come around and sort of slow down and get lower towards these grasses, I see a huge amount of blocking and smearing around these areas. I am standing literally just to the left hand side there by where you can see that blue building, yet it is just unable to deal with this heavy compression. It just simply is blocking up with any movement over any repeating detail like this. And it's sad to say that it is a massive step backwards compared to where we were in the last version. 
Now, whilst the green smearing is still very much an issue, I have to say in my test flights, the jitter side of things seems massively improved. I haven't really seen any jitters since upgrading to this new firmware, but I do need to do more testing on that side of things. It is worth noting though, that there is talk that people using Crossfire may get issues as a result of the telemetry interfering with the avatar system. So if you are someone who is using Crossfire and you are still seeing jitters, I would make sure that you've turned your telemetry option off or consider swapping over to something like Express LRS. Now there is a whole host of other improvements in this firmware around things such as white balance and the 1200 milliwatt mode. I can't actually say I've seen much of a difference in them, but I probably haven't had enough different conditions to be able to see it, but we will take their word on that one that it's better. As I've said, with this firmware, whilst it's nice to see that they have done some of these fixes, it really doesn't seem to have improved the overall behavior with the codec, and we're still seeing a huge amount of smearing in the greens, especially at low level. And as I've already said today, in fact, just having flown this not 20 minutes ago, I feel feel it actually feels worse than the last firmware and not better. Another thing I just want to mention on upgrading this firmware is if you do do it, you won't be able to downgrade it. And that is something that you should be aware of because there is also another change in this firmware and that is that they've changed the Linux root password, which means we will no longer have access to the subsystem. So if you're someone who wants to be able to get inside the way this system works, then you probably shouldn't upgrade at this time. Whilst talking about upgrading the firmware, this leads me on nicely to what happens if it goes wrong on your goggles and your VTX. Now, a few weeks ago, I started asking questions about what is the recovery options on this system if you have a failed update, whether that be through you doing something silly like disconnecting the battery or the update just fails. It became apparent very quickly that basically there is no recovery method. And if you do have an issue with the firmware upgrade, your system will brick, whether that be the Fat Shark or Avatar goggles from Walksnail or the VTX. Now this is something I did highlight with Walksnail and they have apparently added in a recovery for the VTX in this new 23.23.4 .23 firmware, but we haven't actually seen that in action yet, but that is only for the VTX itself. And there is still the very real possibility of bricking your goggles should something go wrong. Right now, as I understand it, there is no official way to recover a set of bricked goggles. You would have to return them to either Fat Shark if it's theirs or Walk Snail if it's theirs. My actual understanding is not even Fat Shark can recover these at the moment and they end up having to go back to Walk Snail in China. Whilst there isn't an official method from them today, the guys over at fpv.wtf have come up with a solution which allows you to actually recover the goggles via a serial adapter via the internal serial port. To do this, you will have to remove the cover off the goggles and then access it. This is something I will possibly make a video about in the future. I believe JB is actually going to do one. So if he does, there's probably no point me doing it as well. But there is a user-based recovery option at the moment, but that may not work in all situations because it will depend on what point you pulled the battery and if the bootloader has been flashed or not, because if you've actually killed it through the bootloader part of the flash, you have probably bricked them for good. As time goes on, obviously we hope Avatar or Walk Snail or Fat Shark, whoever it is doing the development on this system, is going to give us a proper recovery method for the goggles because the reality is it is simply not acceptable to have a product that you cannot recover the goggles in the event of a failure of the update. We have already seen a number of people do everything correct, yet their goggles brick in the update. And this is, in my opinion, one of the more serious issues with this system at this moment in time. Now the bricking subject leads us on nicely to the warranty subject because there's been a lot of noise over the last couple of weeks as well with regards to the warranty situation on the Avatar goggles or the Fat Shark goggles. Walksnail's website states that they give 
15 days warranty and that is it. Now I actually reached out to Walksnail on this and asked a few questions and I'll be honest I haven't really got any concrete answers for you. The information I was given is that they will honour any warranty within 15 days but anything after that will be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. This is obviously very different compared to Fat Shark, who will obviously offer their usual size of warranty and you should be considering this before making your purchase. And whilst I have said in the past that the Avatar system seems better value over the Fat Shark as a result of it including antennas, if you take into account the warranty situation, that may not be the case. It really is too early to know right now how Avatar or Walksnail are going to be handling warranty on their systems. VTXs for me is something I'm less concerned about in the sense of they will generally work or only fail in a crash but goggles of this cost really should have a proper warranty and when I asked them what was the situation if you had an OLED failure after three months they were not willing to tell me and again they simply said to me we will look at it on a case by case basis. My advice to you is if you're buying the Fat Shark system, you should have less to worry about. But if you're going to buy the Avatar system, I would be making sure you're either buying it through a dealer that you can get support from or make sure you're using something like PayPal. So if you do have a problem, you can charge it back if they don't actually support you. We know in the past, Cadex have had a good reputation of fixing Vistas, for instance, even when the users have damaged them. But we simply don't have history to go by on walk snail at this moment in time to know how they're going to handle things so I would be quite cautious on that one. It also raises questions what are they going to be charging people if their system is bricked as a result of this update thing because right now it is possible it could brick entirely out of a user's control and we don't know how they're going to handle that so again do be aware. Now I'm continuing to fly and test and use this system. There's a lot more content to come from me on it as well. And if you're interested in that, please do make sure you are a subscriber. Next will be the video on the RF side of things. We'll be taking a look at a deep dive into how the radio system works on this. And if you're interested in seeing more content like that, please do make sure you are a subscriber. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like that, please do check out the links to my Patreon because it is only with your support am I able to keep buying the products like this be able to tell you my exact thoughts okay so it's time for me to share with you my final thoughts on if i think you should buy this system today with this new firmware version you're going to hear lots of people saying it's fantastic now it's brilliant it's been fixed all of the improvements are in however i am still remaining cautious on this whilst the version 23.23.4 does add improvements the system still is very much a beta product as far as I'm concerned and there's a long way to go before it really does catch up the likes of HD0 and DJI. Whilst it has a huge amount of potential and a lot going for it, there is still a lot of strange things. The behaviour still seems quite random at times. There's that blockiness or that horrible smearing I'm seeing in this new firmware and the fact that users are able to brick this system simply by having a failed update means for me it is still not something I can openly say you should go out and buy without having any worries. It is a beta product, its behaviour is very much the same and until they address many of these issues that's where my stance is on it. As I mentioned earlier in the warranty bit it remains to be seen how they're going to handle this bricking issue and that needs to be resolved ASAP because I cannot recommend a product that a user may buy, upgrade the firmware and then have to send back before they've even used it. That needs to be resolved it needs a proper recovery method and that for me is one of the big steps forward that needs to be taken before it really does enter the prime time with everything else it has a huge amount to offer but it is not there yet now if you're interested in seeing more content like this from me as i've said please do check out the links to my patreon as well as buy me a coffee it is only through you guys supporting me am i able to keep making content like this anyway that's it from me stay safe i'll speak to you soon